Hi, happy people, Jamie Geller here, and we are making the ultimate braised brisket. This is how you wanna prep your economy cuts for that melt in your mouth, tender meat. Now, I just saw this article on HuffPost that said people are scared of braising. So easy. I'm gonna break it down for you, starting with my big mama brisket. Let's get started. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure you pat your meat dry. I'm using a whole brisket here. That's how you get really tender melt in your mouth meat. So pat this baby dry and then we're going to salt and pepper. Don't be scared even to salt your kosher meat. This is an essential step. We want to salt and pepper both sides. You want to put oil right into your hot pan. It's nice. It's shimmering. It's glimmering. You see the heat rising. We're going to get this baby in. Lay it away from you. And that's the sound of a sear. You want to let this get nice and brown and caramelized. This is where you develop layers of flavor. Just let that sit there, hang out for like five to seven minutes per side. So this is the whole brisket. Over here, this is what you're used to calling the deckle or the second cut. Look at all that marbleization. Look at all that fat in there. That's that super moist part of the brisket. Over here is what's known as the first cut. But when you cook this all together as a whole brisket, everything gets nice and tender and soft and buttery, which is how I like my brisket. Whoa, mama. That is a gorgeous sear. Look at that. So five to seven minutes on the second side. We want it to be nice and caramelized. And then we're going to swap it and caramelize our onions in the same pan. Okay. Our brisket's ready to come out. Now we're going to caramelize our onions in the same pan. So searing your brisket is an essential step in the braising process. Now what that does is it develops layers of flavor. So that final dish is like, oh my gosh, what did you do? I need that recipe. Now I have skipped the sear in a time crunch, but it's kind of that secret to the braise. These onions are looking good. This is flavor. All right, our onions are nice and caramelized. Now we're adding all the other good stuff. Bottle of wine. It's a big brisket. If that's a little hard for you, then pour a glass for yourself and the rest goes in. Next we go with two heads of garlic. Cloves right in, just drop them. We've got two cups of chicken broth and a little tomato paste to really thicken this up and just give lots of that kind of umame. And we put back in our brisket. Just put it for a little nap in here. Nestle it in. This big baby. Now always drop these big cuts of meat like I showed you before away from yourself. So this way you don't splash or splatter all over your nice clothes. So I'm customizing today with a little bit of Israeli flair some amazing, gorgeous, juicy, dried dates. So just a rough chop on these dates. They're sticky, they're hard to cut. Don't make yourself crazy. Just kind of in half and good to go. And these are going right on top of the brisket. This is like the two cup recipe. Two cups of dates, two cups of broth, two onions, one whole bottle of wine, and a quarter cup of tomato paste. But it makes it easy to remember. This is when we cover and get it into the oven, low and slow. You want to come back in about four hours when a fork inserted in the brisket comes out with zero resistance. Then you know it's like butter. And if only you could smell what it smells like in this kitchen right now. Cannot wait to see what we made here. Gorgeous. So what we want to do here is remove the brisket from the pan so that we can slice it. No. Oh my gosh. So tender. The second cut just separated, the deckles just separated from the first cut, from the flat. So I've got two pieces of brisket here, perfect for my slicing. We want to leave it here till it's about cool enough to handle, and I want to reduce this braising liquid till it's creamy and rich and just coats the back of a spoon. So what we're going to do here is we're going to serve a portion of it slice, and now we're going to slice the second cut. Now, very important with brisket, you want to slice across the grain, otherwise it's stringy, which is good for like a pulled brisket sandwich, but if we want slices, you got to go across the grain. So as you can see, the grain is going this way, and what we want to do is with a nice sharp knife, we want to go across the grain. So here, beautiful, like butter, like I promised, melt in your mouth meat. Look at this beautiful brisket. Whoa, baby. Mm. 
Coke's prize. That's why you want to make this brisket. Oh, it's so good. And you get to taste it before everyone else. All right. Garni, as they say. Got some over here and some over here. And actually, I want you to see my garlic. So I'm going to bring it all to the forefront and I'll do my little herbs in the background. We need some of our braising liquid. We're going to check it out. You can taste and adjust. Here's when you can add a little bit more salt and pepper if you want. Please, you do not even need to add salt and pepper. It is so good. Okay, so we're just going to a little bit of this over the pan. Now, I like to, you could strain your braising liquid, or you could just leave the onions in there are amazing, and the garlic cloves are amazing, and the dates are amazing. So you can go a little rustic and leave that on it, leave that in as well. I love cooking with you and cooking for you. For classic Jewish recipes and lots, lots more, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Bye, guys. That's the, that's the important part of the sear. Yeah? Yeah. Cook's prize. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my god. Oh my god. Stop, stop, stop. Now I gotta go back. I hope the restaurant we're going to is not dairy. If this doesn't say happy holidays, special occasion brisket, I don't know what does. And I gotta quickly say bye before I eat this whole thing on camera because that would just be embarrassing and then my hungry family would not be happy. Happy brisket, happy braising, happy holidays. Love you guys.